control arms, kingpins, wishbones, struts and bump stops. Just a few of the components that make up a typical suspension system. And while each of these individual parts has an important role to play, at the very heart of the system are the critical parts for load carrying and control. The shock absorber and perhaps its less well-known cousin. And here's the other bit, the springs. And what we're going to show you today is how we take this one and a half tonne coil of wire and turn it into a small coil spring like this. If there's a bloke who knows a thing or two about these coils, well only one name springs to mind. The Spring King is Mark King, and he runs King Springs on the Gold Coast. The company was started way back in 1956. Mark's a two-time Australian GT production car champion, but these days he supplies springs for most of the top V8 supercar teams, along with ARB's Old Man Emu brand. So Mark, how important is a spring? Well, well, all vehicles are made by manufacturers as a compromise, and uh, we look at it this way, it's three H's. If a vehicle needs to be carry a heavy load, or handling, or different height, well then we make a solution for that problem. Since your dad started the company, technology must have changed a bit. Yeah, look, in the recent years, we've been working a lot closely with one steel, and we've built materials now which we call high-stress alloys, and um, the beauty of that now, we can make springs now actually uh, higher stress, more travel, lighter material, up to 20% 20, 20 lighter in weight, so that again gives us a, a, a lot nicer um, finished product. So you've got a spring with more spadoing in it. It's a pretty complicated process from go to woe, but one you'll appreciate when you consider the punishment springs are put through when you're heading off-road. So Mark, I can feel a bit of heat behind me, mate. How hot is yeah, that? It gets pretty hot. We run that furnace about 1,050 degrees centigrade. The whole idea is to get the spring out, make the spring form it, and get into the oil before it gets below 820. And what does the oil do? Well, it brings that hardness up in the material. We actually we get a, what we call a Martin site grain structure. So then from that hardness, we then actually run it through another tempering furnace up further on, which is about 420 degrees, and reduce the hardness back to a window of opportunity that works very nice. Yeah, from this stage we're straight to the powder coating and we can colour them up. How long will a spring last? Well, it depends on the environment. The biggest killer of a spring is corrosive environments, you know, so if you're on the beach all the life and the, you, know, you get that rust and corrosion into it, that's the biggest killer of a spring is any defects on the material. That'll cause a stress riser and that'll eventually cause a failure. But in most cases, they'll last the life of the vehicle. Now that you know all about springs, you know there's no point taking chances with your suspension. Give ARB a call if you want the same tough stuff going underneath your Forby, and we'll fix you up with the best that Old Man Emu has to offer. King Springs make 8 to 12,000 Old Man Emu coils every month. They're Australian made, Australian designed, and not only that, they're exported all over the world. It might surprise you to hear that the most used and abused part of your 4 isn't necessarily the engine or the transmission or even the four-wheel drive system that moves you along. No, the component that arguably cops the most punishment both on and off the road are your shock absorbers, taking the full force of every single lump, bump, rock and knock along the way. Here in a typical front suspension, We've got two components, a spring and a shock absorber. The spring carries the weight of the car and the shock absorber controls the spring and controls the movement of the weight of the car. And what that shock absorber does for us is give us ride comfort as well as handling. And to get those two things exactly right is a very fine line. And what we're going to do is go for a little walk, safety first, and we're going to work out how they do it. Since the beginning in 1979, Every single Old Man Emu shock absorber has started its life right here at the Munro Manufacturing Plant in Adelaide. Back then, a lot of the initial research was done out in the field where it became pretty obvious that without rock solid reliability and long distance endurance, there was no way you could ever reach the finish line. Flash forward a few decades, and while these days there's still plenty being learned out on the tracks and trails and by the seat of the pants ride evaluation, 
Technology has made it possible for ARB to draw on Munro's bank of worldwide research and engineering advances. This is the latest Old Man Emu Sport 4x4 shock absorber. They've got a top, they've got a bottom, and they absorb force. It sounds pretty simple, but as you can see, when you look at all the engineering involved, they're anything but. And you'll be pleased to know that every one of those individual pieces, from the roll steel cylinder tubes to the individual shims and spacers, are made right here, in-house. After more than 50 years building shocks for the likes of Holden and Toyota, the Munro team have the process pretty well down pat and can turn a collection of metal pieces into a fully prepped and painted batch in just a few hours. Of course, it's not just manufacturing that happens here. This is also where a lot of the testing and further development takes place. How about this for a bit of gear? It would have to be the ultimate shock absorber test toy. As a matter of fact, they run this thing for two weeks on end, two million cycles up and down. Now that's got to be more than we're going to do in our four-wheel drive. For more info on Australia's Old Man Emu range of four-wheel drive and competition shocks, get on the ARB website and find your nearest distributor. So what started out as bits of metal and bits of tube is now the finished product. In reality, this shock absorber's journey has just begun. It could end up anywhere in Australia, or anywhere else in the world for that matter. Well, you got a tough life in front of you, little bird. Cape York, Queensland's most iconic four-wheel drive destination. It's rugged and remote, with miles of rough corrugated roads. Touring this type of country requires a whole lot of gear to ensure your 4B lasts the distance, and a good suspension is one of them. Now the average shock absorber wasn't designed to deal with this sort of continued abuse. What happens is it gets hot and doesn't work as it should, and the end result is you've got a really rough ride or you have to slow down. Our ARV Convoy have come prepared for the Cape's craggy conditions. Lockie from Cairns, Mike from Townsville and Gary from Brisbane are all running Old Man Emu suspension and shock absorbers. And what's so important about shock absorbers, you might ask? Think of this as a spring. It's got a lot of stored energy when you bend it. Think bows and arrows and slingshots. And when you hit, say, a big bump in your car and bend that spring, we get this mad oscillation. What we need to control that is a shock absorber. So the bigger the bump or the bigger the load, the stronger the shock absorber has to be to control the movement. But there's one big problem with that. If we have a shocky that strong, it's just impossible to drive around town. But ARB have a new bit of gear that solves all those problems. BP-51s, they've been tagged as the best shock absorber around, both on dirt and bitumen. The BP, which stands for bypass, is the secret to this shock's success. In a shock, the part that does all the work is the valve. Oil flows through it as it opens and closes. When you hit a big bump, you need a strong valve that lets a little bit of oil through. And if the conditions are relatively smooth, you need a soft valve that lets a lot of oil through. Now it's impossible to have two valves, so the BP has a strong one to handle the rough stuff, and in normal conditions, the oil diverts around the valve through bypass tubes. There are actually a multitude of those bypasses, and they can be adjusted to change the amount of oil that goes in and out, so it changes the characteristics of your shocks. And don't go looking for those bypass tubes on your shocks. They're actually internal, so nothing can get damaged. They're quite incredible. Mike's a Cape regular, which is why he runs Old Man Emus. So how long have you been coming up here, Mike? Close to 30 years on Old Man Emu, every trip, and never let us down. Wow. And how's the 200 go? You've got the big BP-51s in this? It's magic. It's, it's a, the next level. It's hard to describe how well it happens. <laughs> Um, 
when it's this isolated and you're this far from home, you want to be sure that you equip your 4B with the best gear that you can afford. Because after all, you want to really enjoy that trip of a lifetime, but you still want to get home to tell everyone all about it. So of course, that means getting into your local ARB store. Take it from these guys. They've done it and they know exactly what you need to tackle Cape York. On this week's show, Sally's got a getaway for food lovers, Roger has the lowdown underneath your Forby, while Liz gets wet just west of Brisbane. G'day and welcome to Creek to Coast for your Saturday afternoon. Now for me, weekends are all about two things, fishing and football. So if I'm out on the water wedding a lot, I'm usually chasing my two boys Ben and Bailey around with their local side Herbert River, or at home watching the mighty Broncos play in the NRL. Now today I am very excited because I'm getting to do both. I'm heading out fishing with one of the Broncos. Now the whispers are this bloke is as comfortable with a rod in his hand as he is with the footy tucked under the wing. Make sure you stay with us, but for now, here's my team. Control arms, kingpins, wishbones, struts and bump stops. Just a few of the components that make up a typical suspension system. And while each of these individual parts has an important role to play, at the very heart of the system are the critical parts for load carrying and control. The shock absorber and perhaps its less well known cousin. And here's the other bit, the springs. And what we're going to show you today is how we take this one and a half tonne coil of wire and turn it into a small coil spring like this. If there's a bloke who knows a thing or two about these coils, well only one name springs to mind. The Spring King is Mark King and he runs King Springs on the Gold Coast. The company was started way back in 1956. Mark's a two-time Australian GT production car champion but these days he supplies springs for most of the top V8 supercar teams, along with ARB's Old Man Emu brand. So Mark, how important is a spring? Well, well all vehicles are made by manufacturers as a compromise, and uh, we look at it this way, three H's. If a vehicle needs to be carry a heavy load, or handling, or different height, well, then we make a solution for that problem. Since your dad started the company, technology must have changed a bit. Yeah, look, in the recent years we've been working a lot closely with one steel and we've built materials now which we call high stress alloys and um, the beauty of that now we can make springs now actually uh, higher stress, more travel, lighter material, up to 20% 20, 20 lighter in weight so that again gives us a, a, a lot nicer um, finished product. So you've got a spring with more spadoing in it. It's a pretty complicated process from go to woe but one you'll appreciate when you consider the punishment springs are put through when you're heading off-road. So Mark, I can feel a bit of heat behind me, mate. How hot is yeah, that? It gets pretty hot. We run that furnace about 1,050 degrees centigrade. The whole idea is to get the spring out, make the spring form it, and get into the oil before it gets below 820. And what does the oil do? Well, it brings that hardness up in the material. We actually we get a, what we call a Martin site grain structure. So then from that hardness, we then actually run it through another tempering furnace up further on, which about 420 degrees and reduce the hardness back to a window of opportunity that works very nice. Yeah, from this stage we're straight to the powder coating and we can colour them up. How long will a spring last? Well, it depends on the environment. The biggest killer of a spring is corrosive environments, you know, so if you're on the beach all the life and you, you, know, you get that rust and corrosion into it, that's the biggest killer of a spring is any defects on the material. That'll cause a stress riser and that'll eventually cause a failure. But in most cases, they'll last the life of the vehicle. Now that you know all about springs, you know there's no point taking chances with your suspension. Give ARB a call if you want the same tough stuff going underneath your Forby and we'll fix you up with the best that Old Man Emu has to offer. King Springs make 8 to 12,000 Old Man Emu coils every month. They're Australian made, Australian designed, and not only that, they're exported all over the world.
Coming up later on in the show, Sally's cooking with produce as fresh as it gets while Liz is mucking around Lake Mugra.